is uh, to uh, really get some uh, discussion on, uh, especially on the interoperability issues related with, with the guidelines. So we will uh, uh, we'll, we'll start here by making a, a brief presentation of the guidelines just to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So just to know that uh, uh, everybody will uh, know what, uh, what is the current situation. We have here copies of, uh, printed copies of the, the current draft versions of the guidelines. These are draft versions uh, that you can pick up if you are interested. So we will start uh, by having that presentation. So Mikael, Lars, and Jochen will present uh, the guidelines now. And then we will split in groups. So the, the, the NOATS, the, the National Open Access Test from Open Air uh, uh, Plus project, will stay in this room. Uh, and we will, you will have the opportunity to, to uh, with uh, Irina and, uh, where is Irina? Oh, here, Irina and Pedro uh, will stay here with, with, with you. And uh, the rest of the people will, uh, will split in three other groups. So we will have a room after, after, you, uh, after the coffee break. So uh, there, there are uh, a hall with three uh, rooms. One, uh, one room has a sign saying Chris. So we will have a small discussion group on the Chris guidelines. Another room has a sign for data repository, so we will have another small discussion group for data repositories, and the third room has a sign saying literature repositories, and we will have a, a, also a small discussion uh, a group on, uh, on, on that. And uh, pr probably around uh, half past three, uh, we will uh, convene all uh, together again here, and uh, there'll be some uh, uh, short reporting from each of uh, those groups. So. Uh, by the way, on the literature repository, uh, Jochen and myself will be there. On the data repository, Lars and uh, Najla will be there. And on the Chris uh, group, Mikael and Natalie, right, uh, will be there. And we will then report back. So, Mikael, please. <clears throat> Maybe you could, um, I just need the folder where all the presentations are sent. Do we? It's just a folder with the presentations from today, I put it in there. Oh yeah? Actually, it's uh, Jochen who will start out, so. <laughs> right. Are you ready? So, hello. I just want to go uh, quite quickly. I just want to go quickly through some slides. Um, just to remember uh, how we started with um, repository guidelines, it's uh, now almost five years ago with the driver guidelines. Um, the idea was, of course, um, to normalize uh, the use of DC, Dublin Core elements in the repositories, and to give some guidelines on the use of the OAI PMH protocol. Um, the result of these guidelines were the introduction of an OAI set uh, driver to indicate um, 
bibliographic records about open access publications. And um, it was also about an introduction of a vocabulary, um, for instance, about the um, publication type. Um, the next big step was with the Open Air project and uh, special um, requirements um, to, to indicate um, funding information. So we introduced just another set, EC funded resources to indicate FP7 funded projects. We extended the vocabularies um, with terms about access rights uh, embargo period, and we introduce an identifier scheme for FP7 project information. The next step is uh, within autumn last year, the introduction of guidelines version 2, uh, which allow us to um, harvest from OAI aggregators. There are not so many out there, but we are currently harvesting from, uh, from the Dutch uh, NASIS aggregator. And <coughs> with the introduction of uh, the Open Air Plus project, we are going beyond um, FP7 um, funding information, so we had to extend um, the identifier scheme for project information. So what has happened in the last five years, um, does the community, the repository community, really use um, the guidelines? And here's an example. Uh, for the adoption of the driver guidelines, um, analyzing um, from uh, 3,000 OAI compliant repositories, which, which are covering uh, 50 million bibliographic records. Uh, we were looking for values in, in the DC type element, and uh, we found out that uh, from uh, the top 100 of uh, values in this element, um, the vocabulary from driver is, is really used. Um, so for instance, for uh, the article publication type, uh, 204 repositories um, use this vocabulary and <coughs> uh, it describes over 1,200,000 uh, records. So with the new um, Open Air Plus project, we have new requirements, we need new guidelines. Um, what are the big challenges and what will change in this, in our ecosystem? Um, one point is that we will merge um, the information spaces from driver and open air to one information space. And we are going beyond uh, literature repositories, so we will also uh, collect um, metadata from data repositories, data archives, and research information systems. And as already mentioned, we are going beyond uh, EC FP7. Um, in Open Air Plus, we want to collect um, open access publication, uh, metadata about open, open access publications, which doesn't have necessarily uh, re um, funding information. And we want to uh, collect bibliographic metadata about um, research outcome from funding information. This can be open access, but also uh, embargoed or closed uh, access publications. Um, what does it mean for repositories, especially for those that already participate in, in driver or open air? Um, first of all, um, we keep things as they already are. So status quo. Um, repositories compliant with the driver guidelines or with the open air guidelines version one or two will be uh, also uh, harvested of course in the future. They don't need to change anything at the moment. Um, but what does it mean for newly joining repositories? Um, in this case, we want to introduce yet another OAI set called open air. Um, but in the future, we don't want to support um, driver and DC funded resources anymore. So we will drop it away at some point in time, but not tomorrow. Um, this new set open air 
will help us to indicate um, yeah, all, all the record we want to collect in open air, and these are open access publications. So the op open access status of a publication needs to be indicated in, in the Dublin core elements, uh, preferably in the DC rights element, and funding information in the DC relation element. We have some uh, challenges to solve. Uh, that's why, at the moment, we can only provide a draft of the new guidelines. Um, one big challenge is that uh, we, for, for the vocabularies, we use uh, a namespace uh, called info u colon eu minus repo semantics. And this kind of namespace uh, will um, discontinue. And so we... Mm, don't want to uh, introduce uh, big challenges, uh, but we, we have to move uh, on in some way. And uh, <coughs> we're also currently discussing how we can extend the vocabulary um, to support um, yeah, other grant information, funder information. For this reason, because we are going beyond FP7, um, we will probably um, provide a registry so that the repository can look up the funders and uh, projects um, we are interested in, in Open Air Plus. And of course, we will also um, try to be aligned with, with other, other initi initiatives uh, like, like ORCID to identify authors. So what are the arguments for the guidelines? So of course, that, that will help us to indicate open access content in repositories. Um, it will help us to identify content that is related to, to um, funding information. Um, <coughs> it's quite important that uh, repositories adopt um, these guidelines because then we can provide uh, a normalized uh, a content that can be used by uh, third-party services for sophisticated services. And up to now, we want also uh, rely on, on a flat format because it's um, quite easy to implement and avoids a lot of complications. And uh, with this new draft of the guidelines, we introduce also the possibility to express links to um, related publications like citations and uh, data sets and research information. Thank you. Okay, uh, so, <coughs> so I'm Lars and I'm coming from uh, CERN and I'm quickly going to present the, the data arc, the guidelines for data archive managers. So Mikael already showed some of it yesterday. It's based on the, on the data side metadata schema version 2.2 and we'll naturally keep it updated once the, the new version comes out. Uh, Data side is really, as you might have seen in the in the presentations over uh, today and yesterday, that uh, it's uh, the most adopted uh, metadata schema for describing heterogeneous um, data sets. So, um, the minimal things you have to de uh, define in data side is really the example you see here. No, oh, doesn't work. Uh, so you need uh, an author, you need a publication year, a title, publisher, and a DOI. So that's the minimal thing you need for data site. What we add on top of it is that it doesn't need to be a DOI. Uh, you, uh, you create for your data set. We accept some other identifiers. Um, on top of that, uh, in the bottom line, you'll see that uh, there's some extra information you can add, and most of it is optional. So we need a, a publication date. We need uh, a description if you have it, it's optional. Um, and then there's, uh, I'll detail the, the, the funding, access right, and uh, related data sets and publications on the next slides. Um, so the type of data sets that we are interested in is the one that are connected to um, a peer-reviewed uh, peer reviewed article in the first round. So we're not interested in uh, a lot of uh, genome data if there's no publications based on it because uh, there's so so much data that we cannot harvest everything in the in the infrastructure. Um, so just to give some examples, then for the access rights, 
uh, we're using the same vocabulary as in, uh, in the literature guidelines, um, which then might change, we'll see. But we're also allowed to, uh, to link to Creative Commons licenses, uh, most notably CC0. Uh, if you want to specify uh, funding information, it's done in this way. You have to specify the fund as the European Commission for an FP7 project, and then you're using the same vocabulary as in the literature guidelines. And for related data sets, um, yeah, as long as you have a persistent identifier, you can link, link to it. Uh, and there's a vocabulary for specifying the semantics in the, in the relation. So for instance, we have here that a data set could be referenced uh, is referenced by a peer-reviewed article in this case. And that's basically it to be able to be integrated into, into OpenAir. That's it. <coughs> and this one is going to be very short because there are no guidelines yet for the Sheriff. So that's what we really like to discuss with some of the experts here. How could it be done? Um, so what is the case is that the internal data model of, uh, of open air, for the open air information space, is uh, Sheriff compatible. It's a subset of uh, Sheriff entities. Um, and we think that you know, Sheriff XML would be the right place uh, to look for something which can be used as um, exchange of data between Chris's and open air. Um, so, for those who want to go to this session, I would like to discuss with them, you know, how can Chris and Open Air exchange data? Should it be, be like application profiles or guidelines or, or, or whatever, and what kind of vocabulary should be used and so on? So that's very short for the Sheriff part. So this is uh, just very shortly the data model, which is probably not possible for anyone to see in the distance. It's just showing that we have these main entities like project and organizations and and uh, uh, well, uh, publications or research output. Okay, so that's it for this, and I hope we'll have a good discussion with you now. Maybe you'll take over now, or no? is it Eloy? Eloy, all right. Yeah, so again, uh, National Open Access Desks will stay in this room. Uh, all the rest of, uh, of us will go away. Uh, you, you, you can follow me and uh, you will... Uh